Hello all, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a project update video for this 1-6 scale radio controlled Armortech Panther Ralph G. Since the last video update, the model's hull has been completed and the model has, in this condition, is now ready for painting. A quick walk around the model. Starting with the engine deck, we have here the addition of the new EastCoastArmory.com Panther antenna base mount. The mount itself is just a resin casting and it is mounted to the hull. The antenna base itself is a new addition to the EastCoastArmory.com product line and can be found on the Panther product page. The, in addition to adding the antenna base mount, the hole was drilled out so that I can install the antenna with the antenna base after the model is painted. After the model is painted, the model's antenna and antenna base will be affixed to the location here. On the internal RX receiver antenna, I attached a small quick disconnect snap which will connect to the antenna once it's fabricated. Once the antenna connects to the model's RX, the model's radio range will be extended and you will no longer have any of the jitters or radio fre frequency problems that the model has with the antenna being buttoned up inside the vehicle. All of the tool posts that were removed or which fell off during the build were remounted and remounted nice and securely via fasteners and epoxy. This would include the tube here for the gun cleaning rods as well as the tow cable mount which is over here. During the construction phase this part here snapped off from being bent back and forth too many times and to reattach it to the mount I simply soldered it to the brass mount from the bottom portion here. The solder holds the piece on very secure and will not fall off in the future. One modification made to the model's fender work was the addition of this small little strip here. If we recall from the earlier videos of this build the, there was a little gap in between the fender and the side skirt mounts. This little gap here is, was incorrect as on the Panther it was connected all together. On, to replicate this I simply cut a piece of steel and I mounted it to these two fasteners over here. That piece of steel connects the entire fender system together making it one unit. I then took a piece of strip brass which was the same thickness of the steel on the kit I bent it to shape and to affix it I soldered it. The solder seam makes a nice smooth little weld and permanently affix it to the side fender and it'll never fall off. This modification was done to both sides of the vehicle. On the sprockets I reattached the bolt securing strip. If we recall once I was working on the build I had to remove the sprocket and I had to remove the kit supplied stra brass strap over here. In replacement of the kit one, I used a thinner piece of steel with the two fasteners. I cut the piece to scale and simply mounted it to the kit supplied holes. On the real Panther, this plate here would prevent the center locking bolt from unscrewing itself while the tank was in operation. Ironically, it does the same feature on the, on the ArmorTech model that we see here. Another addition that was made to the kit or to the model was the addition of these small little loops that are mounted to the spare track rack. These little loops are to attach small lengths of chain with securing pins which would keep the lock pin for the spare track links in place. The small little loops are bent out of steel wire and then soldered to the steel strip that is for the track rack. Once the model is painted the securing pins and the chain will be added thus completing this portion of the build. As we can see from this shot the entire upper deck has been painted with the base coat of Dunkel Gelb, specifically underneath the area of the turret. This is done on all of my builds because once the turret is on, it is going to be a lot difficult to get reach these places with the base coat. This way, with the base coat painted and with the turret applied, once the whole model gets painted with the spray gun, these areas here will always have their coat of the Dunkel Gelb. Also added to the model are the top deck welds. The welds have been added to these locations here which are found on the real vehicle. 
On the real panther, the top deck is comprised of several plates. We have here a small skinny narrow plate in the front, a wider plate here towards the midsection of the front, then the last plate here encompasses the rest of the roof and then we're into the engine deck. The welds themselves are sculpted out of the two-part epoxy and are just there for looks and do not have any structural relevance whatsoever. Like I mentioned in a previous video, the turret glides on this brass machine bushing here. The turret glides very easily, however to help the turret glide even more smoothly, I will coat the rim of the bushing as well as the turret turner gear with the smear of grease. Once that's done, the turret will be reaffixed to the model and all of the connections will be rehooked up to it. Here we can see that the turret ring has just been greased. If we notice, I did not reply or I did not apply a whole lot of grease to the rim, just enough to cover all the surfaces. The gear has also been greased as well. Once the turret starts turning, the grease will be applied to the bottom of the turret gear with its own movement. A lot of people like to use oil for this application, however, the oil will work, but grease in my opinion is a little bit better in that it doesn't evaporate and it stays put. Oil might have a tendency to start bleeding out, which could possibly harm your finish. Also what we can notice, the model currently sits on its tracks. Right after filming, these tracks will be removed for one last time because I need to get access to the lower suspension to properly apply the camouflage and the base coat. The tracks themselves are also incorrectly painted. If you notice, the previous builder painted them with this muddy, rusty brown color. On the real track links, they would have been more of a darker gray, and this color will be, a, will be painted. As of note, a lot of people tend to over-weather these tracks on, on all AFV models. Keep in mind, these track links on the real, on the real vehicles are made out of a high manganese steel content, because of which they rust very little. The reason why, if you see a lot of older vehicles or in museums that have heavily weathered tracks, this is because those vehicles were sitting outside in the elements for approximately 30 plus years. After that time, the tracks will start to show weathering. In addition to that, you will also see severely weathered tracks on vehicles which have been knocked out and more specifically have caught fire. When they catch fire, the heat changes the molecular structure of the, of the steel, which causes it to oxidize, i.e. rust, a lot more quickly than it would naturally. We also notice here that the wheels are soaking wet. This is because after the model was test driven, I went ahead and washed away all of the, of the suspension. This was done to get rid of any dirt and dust that accumulate on the model, either during construction and from all the test drives that this model has undergone. With the dust and dirt away, it leaves for a nice clean surface to which to add the paint to. After the model is painted and weathered, the tracks will be reapplied, reinstalled permanently, thus completing that portion of the build as well. Right after filming of this video, the periscopes here will be masked up with masking tape to protect their paint finish from when the paint is applied. Masking will also be done to other sensitive areas of the build to prevent paint from getting inside the model, namely on the engine grills over here. After the model is painted, these masks will be removed, leaving the original finish intact. And that concludes this project update video for this 1.6 scale ArmorTech Radio Control Panther Ralph G. If you like this video, stop by and like us on Facebook. Also, don't forget to check out EastCoastArmory.com for more 1.6 scale tank builds as well as other 1.6 scale detail components. Thank you.